tell you about these developments, I don't want you to have a fear of technology. I don't want you to get scared of AI and quantum and all the cool things we can do. But I do want you to take a stand. I want all of us here to realize that we need to demand security and privacy from the get-go. So when it comes to developments in quantum, we need to make sure that we are ready, if these advancements are coming, that we are ready and able to counter them by having programs for quantum communications infrastructure, which even with a quantum computer will still be okay when attacked, by having post-quantum cryptographic algorithms that'll provide additional areas of defense for such an attack. So when Kim Jong-un comes a knocking, we're ready. I don't know why I said it like that. I, th I think I'm a bit tired. So <laughs> if I can give you three tips, three tips that you need to remember as a country, as a company, it's get three things and do them well. The first and foremost is security awareness. And I'm not talking about those mandatory corporate presentations you have to do every year, but understanding what your job role or your role means in terms of who is after your data and what is it that you've got to then protect. That's real security awareness. Understanding that if you're the CFO that you might not just get a phishing mail these days but a deep fake voice call. And that that's still possible. If you know that that's a potential threat, you'll know how to counter it. Once you've done that, for everyone in the company, try to figure out what it actually looks like. What is the attack surface and how are we doing and figure out how your competitor is looking in terms of new risks. And then if you can do those two things, make sure you've got the capability to act. Train your worst force and train them again and let everyone know who to call when shit hits fan. When it comes to a like European model or a country model, we need to learn that working together has got to be part of our game. It's got to be part of our DNA. One really amazing example of this is Tiber, which is where the banking sector, who I told you were the most heavily hit, have decided to take their hacking stuff and cooperate. So instead of taking everybody and letting them hack you know, separately, they bring it all together and they say, right, what is collectively one of our most vulnerable places? Let's get that area attacked and then learn from whatever happens at your bank and then improve things at my bank. This is again competitors working together to improve security for everybody. And this means that we can improve the banking sector in one country, across Europe, and potentially across the world. And that's where we need to go. We need to also really have a better understanding when we talk about DevSecOps and all the innovation of how well we know ourselves. And we really need to get that sorted if we want to get any other future improvement. When it comes to enterprise, we all have an idea about how to defend. We rarely have an idea about how attackers attack. But if we would de-layer this and look at every single opportunity area for attack, then we can look at every single opportunity area for defense. So something like this model, which is called the Attack MITRE Framework for Enterprises, is something I can say, take it home. Ask your IT guys and your security guys if they're doing this, and we can actually look for those new attacks. We try to give everything we do away for free, so we put our entire security policy online available for all of you. We also have a thing. You, you guys might use haha <laughs> transfer or <laughs> box to store all of your super classified stuff. Don't. Uh, try to send something where you don't have to be reliant on the person you're giving it to to trust them. This uses in-browser encryption. I strongly recommend it. And send.firefox.com, also really good to send secret files. If I could tell you five things to do, for your own personal security, just five things. First and foremost, install those updates and patches. Everybody do that. The second thing, passwords are like underwear. Change them frequently, make sure you don't leave them lying around, and the longer, usually the better. Right? You, I'm, I'm asking. Um, so use two-factor authentication where it's available, you know, make sure you got that right, and check if you've ever been hacked by looking at have I been pwned, P-W-N-E-D. Make sure you use a VPN, that's always really useful, but use it carefully because VPNs often get attacked themselves, so read reviews. Use an antivirus, it helps, it's like inoculation, unless you're part of the don't immune me stuff. So, and finally, God said to Noah, back up. Back that shit up. 
online, offline, multiple versions, every couple of months, back it up. It's the only really foolproof method. And embrace that technology. You know, I think we really need to understand that we will, when we look at our future of all the cool stuff that you hear being built, we either will use it, adapt, or we will die. We'll be the guy hugging our old analog toaster refusing to let it go online, be it compromised anyway. So figure out what those best practices are, you know, beware as a buyer, and make sure that you are evolving as rapidly as the attackers. Thank you.